Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we can add and remove the built in trackers in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, the first thing we're going to jump in and do here is just go to Window, Workspaces, and we're going to set the default workspace. So, once we've got this set up, we've got a few clips on the timeline here. And first of all, we're going to look here at how we add basic type that will track an object in Final Cut Pro. So, we're going to come up to our type and generators at the top left here, and we are going to come into the bumper and opener title tip. And in here you'll find your basic title. So now in Final Cut Pro you can basically add tracking to any title effect, any color correction that you do automatically without any external plugin. So I'm going to drag this across to my viewer here and we are going to drop it onto an object. So we're going to find this truck here and you can see it's kind of detecting the different objects. It's kind of finding the bigger objects and the smaller objects as I move it around my image here or my still image from this video and we're going to grab this truck right here. So essentially what we have here now once we've dragged our title on to the viewer is this little tracking window. And we can adjust the, the width of that if we want to modify where it's tracking. We can adjust the curvature of it if we're tracking a rounder object or a face or something like that. And then we can also set up the analyze feature up here. So I'm just going to hit analyze. And essentially that's going to analyze the entire clip that that piece of type has been placed above. So you can see at the bottom left, we have our basic title still as normal, hovering above our video here, and we can move it around. It will still use that tracking, but now it's basically gonna follow that track that we added. So you can see now, when I play that through, that title is moving with the truck. Now you might find you get some little jumps and some shakiness in the tracking and there's a couple of different ways we can start to look at how we fix that. So the first one is, is just to look at where those little jumps might be. So I think we can see one part way through this is a little jump and a nudge. So I'm just going to come ahead. You can see the tracker kind of rotates a little bit there. I'm just going to come here and then analyze backwards. So we've got these forwards and backwards analyze buttons and I found that just reanalyzing that particular part of the footage will often fix that little bug in the track. So that's the first thing to try if your tracker is giving you some little shakiness in there. It's just try and have a look at adjusting or reanalyzing part of the footage. So you can see now getting some little nudges there. So if we want to kind of go a bit further and um, we can select the video track behind here and this is where we find some options for the tracker. So we're going to scroll down in the inspector at the top right and you can see we've got the analysis method set to automatic. So here I'm going to change this to combined and then we'll come to the end of our type here. Just come back one frame and I'm going to highlight my basic title and you can see that brings up the tracker again. So sometimes you might have to flip what you've got selected in order to bring up these tracking options. So I'm going to analyze this backwards now again. And I did find the combined option for tracking did kind of help it out a bit. So now we'll actually just come to our type here and we're going to type in, we'll add in a little arrow here as well, just to kind of point to it and I'm going to make my type here bold and then we're just going to push the size of this right up and in order to move the type I want to be careful with how I do this so I'm actually going to turn off my transform options that's going to let me hover over the text here and then we are going to come back and just play this through and you can see actually with the combined option it is rotating a little bit at this one point which is something we need to fix. So we're getting a kind of strange jump just here. But we're going to come back to the beginning again and I'm going to select my type. To bring up the tracker at this point, we need to click on the transform tools and that will bring the tracker back up. So what I'm actually going to do here is just enlarge the area that we're tracking and just see if that won't help it a little bit. So sometimes just by increasing the area, we lose some of the shakiness. So again, we'll track and analyze it again. And you may have to go back through this a few times to get it to work. So we'll see if we lose that little strange bit of rotation with the combined tracking and the slightly larger area that it's tracking. So a couple of little tweaks there. Let's play this back. A 
I think that track is looking pretty good. I'm going to hold down Command and tap T to fade in my text. And then we're going to add one other kind of track here. So I'm going to select my video layer here and we are going to come up to the color correction. I'm going to basically just kind of mute this and darken this just a little bit. So I'm using the color board up here under the color correction and we've modified the exposure of this. So raised up the blacks, dropped down the, the grays and whites and that just kind of mutes the image like this. And then we're going to add this shape mask. And once we've added the shape mask, I'm going to come away from the transform tool here. You can see we get two options here, one for the shape and one for the tracker. So now with the, the shape itself, I'm just going to move this across my truck and you'll see why in a sec. And we'll just scale this down a little bit. And then I'm going to come to my color board options and up in where we can add the mask, we can actually invert that. So basically it's going to mute the background out. So it's going to highlight this area where the truck is. And I'm going to come back to my tracker and you can see now I can hit analyze. And actually we're getting some very strange shapes there. So you can see the, the highlight is getting much bigger and smaller and kind of rotating in some strange ways. I'm just going to tweak a couple of things here. So I'm going to come to that spot where we first started around about here and we're going to go to the video options. We'll just come down to our object track two. And with this one, we're going to change this to combined as well. And then I'm going to hit analyze again. And actually that's still not quite working. So I'm going to come back in here and I can turn on my tracker by clicking this button as well. And I can try the machine learning option, but I'm going to reduce the size of this a bit just so it's more pinpointed to that truck. So let's just get this down there and then we'll hit analyze again. And you can see now we're getting a much smoother motion. It's not trying to track lots of things around that. So you may find that you get different results by playing around with a tracker. It depends on the video that you're working on. You can play around and experiment with that. So now I'm going to come back to my color correction and my shape mask. And I'm going to go back to the shape mask and just increase this a little bit. So we've got a little bit more of a blur to the background there. So then we'll come back to the beginning. We'll play this one through. And you can see there we've now got a much smoother track for that color correction and the inverted color correction. Okay, let's have a look at a couple other things here. So we're going to come to this second clip and we're going to look at how we add a generator as well to our timeline here. So I'm going to come to my titles and we'll come to this dotted circle. I'll, I'll leave a link below of where to download this. It's a free plugin. So we're going to drag this across the viewer and get it to lock to that car object. And now we'll hit analyze straight away. Now with some things like the color correction, the size and dimensions of your color correction may adjust as the tracker works. But with these title generators, as we drop them down, it's just going to move them left and right. So it's analyzing both directions here. And now if we turn off this, we can use the on-screen controllers for this circle. So I just turned off the transform options and we can make that a bit smaller. We'll come up to our title and generators options on the top right here. We're going to just decrease the dash width a bit. We'll click here and change the color to a nice red. And then I'm going to decrease the gap distance so we get a nice dotted line. And then we can also increase the dash height so we get this nice kind of circle around there. Looks pretty nice. Okay, we'll get it to build in and build out. So basically, this is now going to build in. And it's going to keep following that car as we animate through there. And you can see again, we may need to come in here, come back to our transform options. So hit the blue button to come back to the tracker so that we can perhaps just modify this. I'm going to come to my video down here. So you'll find yourself jumping between these two layers a little bit. And I'm going to just change this to combined. And we'll then 
come back up to our title layer. I'm going to analyze backwards and just see if we don't get a smoother result there with that combined option. And that's looking fairly decent. So we're going to add another title here, a little call out. So we're going to come to the Brett FX Power Tools here and we're going to use the, the simple call out. So I'm going to add this at the beginning around about here. And then with this call out, we'll just go into where it's already animated. I can move this up here. We'll adjust a couple of things here. So I'm going to come to the type and generators options. I'm going to make the outline color match the red of my circle. And we'll just increase the width a little bit. So it kind of matches the thickness of the circle there. We'll make the fill color white here. And then we'll just come into the type and modify that as well. So you can see I'm jumping between the generator options and the type options here. We'll make this a, a black text. And then up in the title generator options, we can change a couple things here. We've got some options for the pointer length, the pointer angle. So I'm just gonna get it to cut through one of these dashes and we'll have it call out to there. So what we're gonna do now is get this to attach to our previous track. So with this highlighted, I'm gonna turn on my transform options. You can see I've got my trackers down here and I've got my object track. So I can select that and it's gonna use that same object track from the circle below. So let's play this through now. You can see my tracker and my call out are working really nicely together. We can add other layers into there as well. So for instance, if we duplicate this layer, just holding down the option key, I can turn off my transform options. We can move that second call out. We'll pop it over here. We'll change the angle of our line here to come across from the other side and just increase the pointer length a little bit so that it matches there nicely. So now let's offset this. So even if we offset this, it's still just gonna use that original tracker so we don't need to actually track again. It's just gonna keep using that original track. Let's have that later. So let's play this through. Okay, and then obviously we can come in and modify our type. and away we go. So some quick instances of where we can use the tracker with the built-in plugins and any plugins that you use in Final Cut Pro. So let's have a look at this last example here. So with this video, we're gonna add this paddles dashed lines onto our timeline here. So once I've added my dashed lines, I'm gonna to come to the video below and I'm gonna come down and add a new tracker. Hit the plus symbol there. And I wanna try and find a spot with a nice little bit of contrast in the top right of this screen where he's working. And we're just gonna make this a little bit smaller around this kind of dark square of cables that we can see here. So this is always in shot, so hopefully we'll get a good track from this. So you can see once we've added that, we can come to our dashed lines. We can turn on the transform options. And then you can see here we can go to our tracker and we're gonna use the tracker from the layer below. So it's the object track four that we're using in the top right here. I'm gonna come to transform and we can move this dashed line up to the center there. I'll increase the size of it so it fills the screen and then we're gonna modify some of those options. So we'll increase the dash thickness. We will change the center mask. So we're kind of focusing in. Actually, we'll move this just a little bit closer to where his hands are. And again, modify the center mask. So those lines always almost right at the center there. And we're gonna have it build in. We'll change the color to this red. And let's play this through and see how well this tracks. So 
So that is pretty good. Okay, so you can see from these few different examples that the tracker has some really useful features in it. It's really super easy to use. Some nice ways of layering up those different type and graphic elements and getting them to track different objects or doing color corrections within your Final Cut Pro project timelines. Hopefully this is useful. Um, if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, the object tracker, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.